Hey, how's it going? This is Chris with Chris's Comments coming back once again. Uh, we had a little bit of a uh, thing take place here. The uh, infrastructure bill has passed, but it's only $1.1 trillion by a vote of 69 to 30. So, I mean, it's it's a, it's a fantastic news and everything. Uh, the $1.1 trillion out of the $3.5 trillion infrastructure. Um, and that's great news. This thing is... Um, 550 billion on new spending, 110 billion on our highways, 65 billion on expanded broadband, which is very important. Uh, I like that part and the highways. 39 billion on public transit, which I think is also just as good. Um, plus, no new taxes on the middle class. Now, middle class these days is anybody making less than uh, $400,000 per year which uh, I don't know anybody that's making that much money, but, you know, who knows? Now, the reason why I bring this up is because um, there's a strong opposition by our right-wing leaders. And uh, the right-wingers, the I should say just the R-wingers, because there's nothing right about them so far. Yeah, the uh, Republicans are opposing this uh, infrastructure bill. They're saying it's too much, leads to inflation, uh, and all this other garbage and that it's going to be putting our children in debt and all this other stuff and yeah you know that's all fine and dandy um, it would be totally believable if it weren't for the fact that taxes have been risen on us for the past 20 years starting with the war on terror um, they've been skyrocketed and we've been paying out the yin yang uh, for for these uh, purposes that have not benefited us at all, okay? Two billion dollars a, a week fighting overseas in Afghanistan and then later on Saudi Arabia, you know, uh, we the working class, we've paid for all that. So to see them now saying a trillion dollars, uh, three trillion over a 10 year time span is too much it's just th that comment alone is just dumb and the rest of them that follow are just as you know putting our children our grandchildren our great children's children's children in debt dude it's a 10 year time span and even still that won't last very long once we all start getting back on our feet because when everything goes back to normal we're back to paying taxes, and we've been paying them left and right, you know, for the longest time, and it was always too much. But the big purpose as to why this is going on, the big purpose of why this is going on, this is why you should really pay attention, is because once passed, they have to put that money to good use. But they won't, because they'd rather spend the bill's money on their own needs instead of what it's actually here for the infrastructure yeah we will once it's passed we will find out which political leader goes to work and which puts the money to good use which political leader does nothing but be a lazy bitch that's not only wanting to uh, not want to put it on infrastructure but wants to pocket the cash and leave for the people with nothing. Okay. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Everybody that's opposing this right now. Our people. That means that once this bill passed. They have the option of ordering and requesting. Certain amount of cash. For their city. To be uh, repaired. Restored. If not just. Uh, if not just kept up on the maintenance. Because some bridges just need maintaining. We don't really need whole new bridges. Don't get me wrong, there are some that we do here in San Antonio. We need a lot more overpasses than what we already have now. But that's, you know, that I got faith in my in my mayor making the request uh, for it. Now, whether the governor of Texas actually listens to this is an entirely different story. You know, I'm expecting him to do nothing but bitch and complain and all this stuff. And again... It's because he just doesn't want to do the work. I can already declare that coming out of Texas. 
uh, me coming in Texas about my Texas governor. I can't really say that for all of y'all out there who are watching this in other states. But yeah, in Texas, Greg Abbott is just the worthless son of a bitch that, uh, excuse me, the in, in, in Texas, Greg Abbott is just the laziest, worthless son of a bitch that doesn't really want to do anything. Um, he doesn't want to work. So that part is, is obvious. And, but I can't say anything about your state's governor, whoever is watching this out of what state. That's the big picture. You know, right now we got the first 1.1 out of the 3.5 trillion that's already going to be in effect. What we still need, however, is the 28% corporate tax cut. Okay? Or tax rate, I should say. We need a 15% corporate minimum on international profits. That was what was also promised at the very beginning of the Biden administration. And we need taxes on people and businesses that are making more than 400k per year. Okay? No raise taxes. He's and he's living up to that promise right now. No raise taxes on anybody making less than 400,000. But he still needs to tax them that are making 400,000 plus every year. You know, we need to be focused on that either by uh, earned capital gains and earn dividends, just like the way he stated from the very beginning. Because all of that will lead up to a 46% um, increase or boost in economy. Uh, it'll lead to, it'll make up, I should say. Correct, uh, let me rephrase that. That's that's uh, said wrong, I'm sorry. The correct way of saying it is that the taxes on the businesses account for an estimated 46% of revenue gains okay that's the more precise uh, those are the more precise words this is a more precise statement now 46 percent for for our economy that's uh that's some serious money that's some big that's you know and all that is is just a 28 percent uh, of taxes and a 15 percent minimum in it on international profits Okay, now that 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 can bring up to forty six percent, make up to forty six percent of our national economy, and uh, again, that's one heck of a break. Um, with that kind of taxation, yeah, it's actually even more than ever possible for people who are making less than four hundred thousand dollars a year um, to actually, you know, to receive some kind of relief uh, out of this. Because that kind of money you can pay for, you can pay for it. Now, granted, that's that's all still bonus. It's not etched in stone. That way, it's not there to replace what we the people are not going to be paying. Uh, despite the fact that it can be used for that, um, that is, however, a, a huge, huge, you know, relief for us on our end. And we know we're good for it on our end. We've been we've been taxed for the most outrageous crap, you know. The highest gas taxes, the highest paying for the highest fuel uh, prices. We're living in an, at a time where housing is a hell of a lot more expensive, especially here in Texas, where all the migration has come. You know, people have sold their five hundred thousand dollar one story, three bedroom, two bath house, no garage, very small front and backyard, and they come down here to Texas where they have the same three bedroom, two bath house, big garage, big front yard, big backyard, you know, and they're paying two hundred thousand dollars. You see the you see the the reason for where this. So these days here in San Antonio, prices are just skyrocketing. We're, the, people are paying three hundred thousand dollars for a, for a house at a bare minimum, two hundred thousand dollars for fixer upper. You know, it's just outrageously stupid. And what was it like before that? They used to be sold at one hundred thousand dollars for a three bedroom, two bath, um, two story house with a big garage, a two car garage, a front and a backyard. A roomy one too. 
<laughs> uh, that's not the case these days. You have to pay three times that much. You have to pay three hundred thousand dollars to give you what I to get what I just described. But again, people's houses up in Philly and up in the over in California and all them, their houses cost seven hundred thousand dollars, eight hundred thousand dollars. You know, as a bare minimum of five hundred thousand dollars. And they're coming down here having to only pay $300,000. So we got prices skyrocketing. We've got um, taxes way up there. But we know we're good for it. You give us the chance to actually put the commitment to it. And we can actually see our end through. Because we are the working class. We're American citizens. We're the working class. We're the ones that see this crap through. So... When I back to what we still need, what we still need that 28% corporate tax rate and the 15% corporate minimum on international profits, you know, and the taxes on individuals making 400,000 plus a year, whether it be through capital gains or dividends, if not all of the above, you know, that part still needs to be done. Um, that part still needs to be done. And uh, hopefully they'll be able to get it done. Godspeed. It is uh, currently right now, uh, August 11th, 2021. We've been waiting for a good while now. Still in the first year, but that's beside the point. We've been waiting for a good while now for our leaders to uh, come together and uh, make a good bill. Passing this infrastructure bill. And... Um, Unfortunately, it's taken, you know, quite a while for this to happen. I think I started this, um, I started this podcast, no, I started this uh, comments show in late January, early February, and I've now, coming up to the middle of the year, middle of summer, and we're looking at, um, you know, we're looking at the same stuff that I've been quoting this entire time, you know, that the uh, the corporate tax is good, the wealth tax is a good thing, the infrastructure bill should pass so that way we can have a uh, decent run through of uh, of our economy, uh, and it's it's still looking that way, um, despite the fact that we've now have no longer have COVID, just COVID, we've got the COVID variant, and. Um, and it's, excuse me, and it's just so important to get this going through. I'd like to close up with that COVID variant. There's a lot of people that are still rejecting the masks and they're rejecting the, uh, the vaccine. And pretty soon they're also going to be uh, labeling bad stuff about the booster shot, something that I'm going to be taking uh, as well. Now, earlier I've stated that I've had a, a, a unfair advantage on everybody. My body is used to vaccinations, immunization shots, uh, flu shots, and all this other stuff. As far back as when I was a child, getting chicken pox shots, mumps shots, measles shots, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and any other kind of virus that rashes out. Uh, whatever the case. Um, I've personally had the shot so I had an unfair advantage when I got the Johnson and Johnson one shot one kill um, as soon as my body took it, it it soaked it up like a sponge and circulated it you know faster than anything uh, 15 minutes after the shot I wound up actually revitalized uh, my aches and pains went away um, I could breathe a whole lot easier um, my muscle strength came back and um, Again, the, the pains and aches just went away. I wasn't as exhausted as I as I usually was. Uh, I was always in need of a nap, and um, when I got the shot, all of those things went away, and I went right back to normal. And I really, really wish that everybody would go right back to normal. I want everybody to start um, doing their research on these on these vaccinations. Um, and take the proper one that you know your body can handle. It's just so important 
to do this. Um, I've lost two family members due to COVID-19 and I really don't want to lose anybody else um, now that the COVID has, has mutated to uh, the variant, the Delta variant. Uh, I, I really, really want everybody out there to just, you know, just consider it and, and stop believing ghost stories and horror stories and stop thinking that just because one person had a bad reaction that that's what's going to happen to you. Um, you should know your own body well enough to know whether or not it's going to be a bad effect worth something or, or if it's just going to do what it's supposed to. And that's just plain kill the virus. You guys know this. You know how, to, how your body works. You know how you function. You know the, the worst symptoms that you've been under through whatever illness. And you also know how well you can recover. Um, I need y'all to look some common sense. Use some common sense on common ground. And uh, get this taken care of. Because it's, again, I've, I've lo I personally have lost two family members uh, within one year. Within one quarter of a year. Um, I hope that, um, I hope that you guys aren't going through it as bad as my family has. And I hope that you've, uh, that you're on your way to make a recovery and, and honestly, get the vaccine, get the vaccine. Some, some people are saying that there's heart problems and I can honestly say with common sense, yeah, that's possible just simply because you've been weakened by the COVID while being asymptomatic, once that virus is dead, your heart rate has to go back to a normal function. If it doesn't go back to a normal function, it will kick up in speed. It will speed and it'll get you into a panic mode. You might even, you know, you might have to go on a dialysis or something. Uh, stuff like that has happened even before there was a COVID virus. Um, but you got to take the precautions and you got to remember it's all curable. It's all fixable. Your heart is nothing but an organ. It has to be fixed and re, uh, re, um, I, I want to say calculated. I don't want to say that, but it has to re reorganize itself. Your body needs to refunction itself. And, um, as far as that Bell's palsy, that has not happened. However, there was a small number of, um, aneurysms where um, people had to go back to the hospital and get on the uh, that um, that pouch that they inject in, an IV and they had to uh, rest for a good while and let their motor functions their brain motor functioning go back to normal kickstart back into uh, into normal mode um, but that's about it the heart accelerates when your ills are done and it's got nothing holding it down anymore, the brain function needs to readjust itself. Your whole body needs to readjust itself. You can't just get up and run like the way I could when I got the injection, uh, when I got inoculated. It, you know, I and you can't expect yourself to be that well on the recovery. You have to take it patient. You have to use uh, patience. Okay, you have to be very careful with it. You have to review yourself and study yourself you know um you i don't i can't nobody can expect you to be as good as of a recovery as me we can only expect you to know your body and and to be truthful with yourself and to be truthful with the 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 hospitals and the doctors that are actually there for you uh and and make yourself uh reliable to them with all the information that they need to in order to get you situated and then record that data and then have that spread out throughout the medical field so that way whoever is next go undergo some kind of problems they already know how to handle it the more we do this the more data we share the more information you know how this goes we can't make bricks without clay plain and simple um and that's pretty much it there's there's a delta variant there's vaccines any result that happens of it is treatable and it's best that y'all start doing that it's best that y'all start 
going more on the safer route. We've, we're losing a lot of people now. We've got a lot of um, infected and very little, very little uh, equipment now. It's running out. There's little space uh, in hospitals because of these uh, beds that are being taken, and it's just uh, it's just very disheartening. It's very disheartening, and it brings the spirits down knowing this. Um, so, y'all take care, y'all. Thank you for letting me rant. Uh, just, thank you for letting me just pour this out. Uh, it's very, uh, the, it is a little saddening, you know. It's saddening to see people go. It's saddening that there's, you know, so many people having to be hospitalized and quarantined, you know. Uh, this this town, I mean, it's 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 getting weaker and weaker. It's getting less and less busy, you know. And it's just saddening, you know. I'm saying this because I'm a rideshare driver and I mingle with everybody out here. You know, I take people to and from. And um, I'm hearing all these sort of stories. I'm hearing testimony. Uh, and I'm hearing rants and rhetoric, you know, stuff that just doesn't make any sense. Um, stuff that you know is a full-blown lie. And, and it goes on and on. And it's just downheartening. So, I come up here with this show to fill you in on what's going on on this side of the world. Um, Texas, one of the most highly infected states. And uh, I hope you all, I hope we can recover faster. I hope all of you out there recover faster. Um, and just, you know, stay safe and and, and try to tough this out with me. Because <laughs> that's what I'm doing. And that's what we all technically have to do. So that's it for now. Y'all take care. Y'all take it easy. Stay safe. Uh, don't forget social distance. Don't forget to always wash your hands. Um, don't forget uh, to wear your masks. And don't forget to uh, get inoculated. Get yourself, get yourself that vaccine. Y'all take care, okay? This is Chris with Chris's Comments signing out.